Okay, cool. So, yeah, um, pretty straightforward piece we're working on this time. Um, like, uh, I, I'm sure, did Chris forward you the email I sent over to him? Yeah, well, regarding sort of retention, correct? Right, 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 right. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, the gist of it is that we're, yeah, we're looking for methods of keeping employees and recruiting employees, and um, we're really looking for uh, – Specific tips and best practices on um, what you can do to sort of attract people, retain people, uh, and then, you know, make the workplace more um, attractive, um, you know, and, and obviously, you know, people love to talk about, you know, uh, increasing the hourly wage or, um, you know, having a great corporate culture and all that kind of stuff, but, we'll put, you know, that's kind of, those are kind of a given, so we're, we're kind of looking to dig deeper and see, you know, what different people are doing to address these issues. I know that labor is uh, kind of a major issue right now. So, um, yeah, just, just wanted to pick your brain and see what you, what you have on your end. Yeah. I mean, so it's, it's, a, it, I mean, it's like, it's a multi-level question, right? Cause there's the out, it's hourly stuff, um, which is one sort of strategy. And then there's, um, GMs and AGMs and, you know, sales leaders and corporate, which is a, kind of another, um, not different strategy altogether, but just different components to it. So um, just with the market being the way it is, if we, you know, we we don't want to hire a GM and, the, you know, the GM leaves in three months because they're getting, you know, a couple more dollars down, down the street. So we look at things like sign-on and retention, meaning like um, you stay with us for a year. Um, there could be an incentive to stay with us for a year, two years, and, and that sort of thing so that there's a – there's lining at the end of the day to stay with us for a little longer. Um, we also have um, plans in place for, you know, when we sell assets, we try to move people, um, if they're relocatable, um, to stay with us. So we look at, we explore options on that because it's, again, once you find a good GM or DOS or AGM, you kind of, it's easier, when you talked about culture earlier, it's easier um, to to kind of spread your culture and, when you have people that have been a part of you for a while and it works in some instances and it doesn't in, in others because people don't always want to relocate. Um, and so we try and find the right homes for people um, if, if possible. And then, you know, from our perspective, you know, a lot of the stuff that you've already talked about, you know, you do your wage watch, but you also kind of look at incentive programs regarding transportation, getting people to and from work. Um, that's a big thing. Um, and trying to get people um, to a spot where maybe they can't, normally get to on their own because they don't have access to uh, transportation, getting them and making their life a little bit easier with regards to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So, I mean, uh, let's talk about the hourly portion for a moment. I mean, sure. you know, I I'm thinking in some, in some markets, right. I mean, you know, you're competing with the hotel down the street or next door for the same kind of labor pool. Right. I mean, so is, is that, is that an issue? I mean, do you have to sort of, out recruit, uh, you know, what the, your comp set is doing for recruiting. Yeah. And you just need to have, you, you, you're competing against each other, but you're also, the, the market is just so tight, um, that you got to make sure that the, where you're recruiting, you're got to make sure that your, your, your message is out. Um, so we have things, um, we conduct job fairs at our hotels. Um, we have, so when we open a new hotel, we have sort of a exercise where we invite everybody in to see how they can they act socially with man, bringing a lot of managers in. So basically, you can apply and interview in person, kind of at one one location. Um, and so you are kind of recruiting against the other hotels, but it, it's also you need to, you know, I don't want to go to the wage thing, but you know, the wage is obviously important, and it's also the type of work and what's out there. I mean, you're not just competing at hotels; you're competing against you know, Starbucks and, you know, in and out Burger and Walmart. And I mean, you're, so it's a, it's not just an industry competition or another hotel down the street. Um, it's competition just for labor in general, getting people in. Right. Right. That's a good point. That's a good point. So, I mean, and how do you kind of, uh, is there a way to sort of attract people and, and, and tell them, you know, give them a message and sort of say like, you know, uh, if you have a choice between working at Starbucks or working at our hotel, you know, this is why you should work at our hotel. I mean, how do you communicate that? 
Yeah, well, we rely heavily on the GMs to, to on the hourly side, um, but the GMs need to understand, and we work with our talent acquisition to make sure that they're armed with, with the right verbiage, right, and the benefits that we offer. So not many companies offer benefits to part-time workers. We do. Um, and so there's benefit packages, but there's also, you know, how do you um, – you need to make sure people understand what a benefits package is worth and why that makes a difference. So, um, you know, our GMs know that, they're armed with that, but you got to kind of get to that point. And I think, you know, let's – there's a – you know, making beds is not easy. You know, being a room attendant is not easy. Um, and it's, you know, not – always the highest paying job in a hotel or in a market with regards to, you know, you could work at a Starbucks or you could work, you know, at a Walmart and, you, you know, you're not cleaning a room, 15 rooms every day. So mm-hmm. it's, it, you know, how do you reward them? What are your incentive programs for, um, for good room inspections? You know, how do you do your employee of the month or your team member of the month? We have things like um, for our front desk hourly workers, yeah, they have an hourly pay, but if we get a perfect sell, then they get, um, they split the ADR for that day. Um, so they can mm-hmm. get a, basically a bonus every day for selling hundred percent of the rooms and that incremental. And we have some hotels that, that where their front desk agents make quite a, quite a bit of money, um, based on that daily bonus that they can get. So, um, those are things that we try to explain to people, especially when we're hiring front desk, you know, we try to explain that to them that that's unique to the industry. Not everybody does something like that. Um, and yeah, your hourly wage might be X, but you can make, you know, 30% more than that in one day, um, right. on, on your wage. Right, right, so right, right. It's being creative, but it's also making sure that the GM are implementing a lot of the programs, um, that should be done. So we can see, you know, if we, we reach 100% of a hotel, then we know there should be a front desk incentive paid out. That sort of stuff. Right, 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 right. So how does that work again with the uh, with the the bonus? I mean, how do you how do, what do you mean um, split the ADR? I mean, how does that work? Okay, so say so say three say there's three front desk agents that work that day. Yeah. Right. And let's just say the ADR for that day was seventy five dollars. I'm just using very round numbers, so it's very easy. But say there's three front desk agents that work that day. We sell a hundred percent of our rooms, and the ADR for that day was seventy five dollars. Mm-hmm. They'll each get. 25 additional dollars that day. Okay. Right. So cool. if you're at a resort and there's three or four people working and you know, your ADR is 350, you know, you get a hundred, you're going to get a hundred and you know, $15 that day extra. Right. 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 And so when you're competing in a seasonal market where everyone's going out, I mean, having that versus a resort or a seasonal hotel doesn't have that, that creates a stickiness and a retention. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That's a, that's a, that's an interesting one. That, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. That's cool. And if, anything else like that that you do, you know, for other um, areas of the of the hotel staff? Well, the ha- housekeeping has has sort of things with regards to like their inspection. So if they get, you know, internally they get good good scores from their inspection, then they can get incentives. Um, and so those are kind of, but that's sort of more standardized. I think everyone kind of does that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think our front desk incentive kind of helps us really focus on reducing turn and creating good service. But also, you know, it's, it helps the hotel reach its if, if it has a chance to sell out. It helps it helps them. You know, helps the hotel tell and it helps them. So it's the win win. Right, right, right. That's that's cool. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, that, that's excellent. And you said you, you guys are, and you offer a part time. Uh, you offer a benefit package for part timers too. That's and that's something that again you don't find a lot of your competition is doing. Correct. And we we have four hundred one k match. Um, and you know, again, some people have it, but not everybody has it. So it's it's not that if you just have something, it's the fact that you got to make sure that the people you're hiring know you have it, or the people you're recruiting know you have it. Because just having it and not kind of advertising it and um, making sure that they understand that that's a difference maker, then there's no sense of doing it. So it's really making sure that the message is clear when they come in um, or when we have our job fairs or our opening kind of um, hiring events that these things are communicated to people, what sets us apart. Right, right. That's That's great. That's great. Um, I mean, it, it, anecdotally, I mean, has the, the labor situation kind of uh, – 
improved or worsened or gotten or kind of stayed the same for you in I guess the last year? I mean, what, what's the what's the trend situation with that? I just think it's it's getting what. Well, some markets it was more difficult earlier, and I think now it's just the same thing we saw maybe a year ago, a year and a half ago. In some markets where we were just like, this is very difficult, it's probably in 95% of our markets right now. So it's just a mm-hmm. very tight, hard to get people. You're competing over people. You have a lot of um, – you just have a lot of positions open, and you have quite a bit of turn. And, um, you know, some of it's preventable and some of it's not, right? If someone really leaves for 25 cents, then they didn't. They don't care about your benefits package. They're like, well, I don't care. If, you know, I don't want to. I don't care if my room inspection. I can get twenty five cents easy over there. And so that's that's difficult. But um, I think it's just it's sort of the same, but it's in more markets and it's just difficult. Mhm. Mhm. Right. 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 And like you were saying about the the uh, you know go next door for twenty five cents. I mean. Are there, what, do you have any other strategies as well for kind of, um, you know, dissuading people that are that are going to be motivated, like you said, purely by the, the the rate per hour? I mean, is there anything else you can do to kind of keep them um, on your side of the fence rather than you know just just boosting their pay? Well, I mean, we're right now we're doing a whole program throughout all of our hotels, and it ends in like ten days. Um, is making sure the break rooms in the back of the house is the place that they want to be, you know, where they want to eat lunch that they're proud of and the back of the house represents the front of the house. So making that environment better um, and making sure there's more recognition boards in the, in the back of the house. So we're trying to do a lot of softer things. Um, mm-hmm. But, again, if someone – if they don't participate in the benefit program and that stuff's not important to them, they're just going to go for 25 cents. And you just can't throw – money at everybody um, because it's really at a certain point you're still going to have turn and you don't really know it's not really that quarter to everybody so it's it's hard to manage every single piece of what's what's important to everybody um, but mm-hmm. we're trying to do a lot of softer things to try and keep people around with like the front desk incentive the you know cleaning incentive cleaning up the back of the house making sure all the break rooms are freshly painted all the appliances work everything's clean and we maintain it and if, um, do things like that, but it's harder just that, you know, could just throw money at people, but it doesn't mean they would stay. Right. 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 Yeah, for sure. Um, what about things like, uh, like flexibility, uh, like scheduling flexibility and, and, uh, PTO and stuff like that. I mean, is there anything you're doing there that, that helps? I think we have, I mean, I think we have a pretty good PTO policy, um, and people earn it and it, you know, as they earn hours, it's like everybody else. I couldn't tell you if um, it's not on the low end of vacation. I don't know what the higher end of stuff is, but um, we, when it comes to PTO, when we like buy a hotel, we honor um, the person's hire date from the previous company, um, and so we kind of bring that in, and they can go into a higher PTO bucket. So that way, when we acquire a hotel, that we might not have people leave stuff like that. Um, yeah. Right. Right. I mean, and, and what kind of like um, upward mobility is there? I mean, do, just do do people have feel that they have an opportunity to to you know uh, grow and you know maybe get promoted or get raises or, or things like that over time? I would um, I you know it's a, we just talked about this at our annual conference and I think there's um, right now is one of our focuses is really kind of making sure our bench strength is stronger. Right now, you probably a lot of people have probably talked about that with you, but really making sure our AGM can become a GM, and making mm-hmm. sure that that AGM feels like they're being trained, and that creates a stickiness with regards to okay, well, are they learning how to read a P&L? Are they learning how to order? Are they learning sales and what pace is? So that their toolkit is expanding as they're doing their job, right? And the things they're supposed to do, but they're also learning a great deal that prepares them to be a GM, because a lot of the a lot of the hiring I think that companies do, um, it's from external. They hire another GM to be a GM. But what we really want to be able to do is have AGMs become GMs, and then we have GMs where we've sold their hotel, and now they work task force for us. Or, we, you know, like I said earlier, we, there's a hotel that basically we had a very good GM, and she unfortunately had a move, um, but we didn't want to lose her, so she's become – task force because we have no hotel where she had to move to. So she works task force for us and she's a very 
good person culturally for us to be out there working with hotels. Um, mm-hmm. And she knows all our systems. So, it's, you know, we try to keep the people um, that we keep, we try very hard to keep the people that, that are, you know, represent us very well and that have the ability to either move, relocate, or travel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Okay. Right. Now, I mean, of course, there's also um, a cost to, you know, recruiting and, you know, whether it's, I guess, time, labor, uh, you know, uh, advertising and so on. I mean, um, I mean, has there anything specifically that you've found that's um, helped you kind of get all this recruiting done, but but keeps the cost down or or is maybe uh, a solution that's maybe cheaper than the way you've done things in the past? No, I think we're just we do a lot more. You know, with our HR systems, we kind of get a job posted and it goes out to a multiple feeds um, mm-hmm. for multiple areas where people look. But I don't think that um, – I don't think it's getting less expensive, but I think we're pretty efficient in the way that we do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, do you find that um – you know what works best for you guys? Is it? I mean, is it the job fairs? Is it the online postings? Is it you know postings in the? I mean, I don't know. Do you, do you even still post in the newspaper? Job listings, things like that. Well, you, you, the thing is, you you don't typically, but there's some markets where you do because that's actually where people look. Um, mm-hmm. Not everyone looks online, so um, that what we typically find. To be most effective is like the online postings get a lot of um, applicants, but then if you reach back out to them to try and get an interview, the take rate's very low. So it's mm-hmm. don't know if there's auto replies. To it. So try and getting people in person um, is kind of what we prefer to do because you can kind of they can apply and you can meet them and interview and you can move through things very quickly. Um, and I think it allows for the GMs in the hotel to, to be very proactive in that day. I'm checking online and making sure your sort of applicant pool and bucket for every job you post. It gets very mm-hmm. time consuming. It's obviously extremely important, but the take rate sometimes is not very high after you start to reach out to some of the applicants. Right. Right, right, right. Gotcha. Gotcha. Interesting. Yeah. And, I mean, and yeah, and I think you, you mentioned, I mean, um, maybe it's automated or something. I mean, any other thoughts as to why that is? I mean, it seems like if somebody takes the effort to apply for a job and you get back to them and then they don't respond, it's sort of, you know, any other ideas why that might be that the take rate is as low as it is? No, I mean, it, no. I mean, it could be that it's just an auto-generated apply. It could be that they apply to 15 different things and they might, you know, someone else got to them first. Or right. they really you, you don't you don't know um, and just don't have really any good data to say to the interaction right. with people who don't come back. They're like, hey, why why is it that you didn't come back? Because there was really probably no interaction yet, so to turn right. them off or on, right? So you can't hard to gauge that. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, cool. So, I mean, where is this all headed? I mean, is there anything uh, new that you guys are thinking about trying? I mean, do you, and how, you know, in terms of the trend for the labor, you know, the broader trend, I mean, is it going to stay the same? I mean, is there any kind of uh, change on the horizon as far as you can tell? I don't see a change happening uh, on the horizon. I think what our focus really is on getting – a really strong training program together, really improving our bench strength in our AGMs and sales managers to be DOSs and GMs to be regionals and AGMs to be GMs and really focusing on that level for us. Also Mm. hiring, um, going out to hospitality schools, but also allowing internal candidates to apply for management and training programs where they have a mentor within our company to move, move on. So that's something that we're, you know, 75, 80% done with designing. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because I think going out externally to continually try to recruit is one, extremely time consuming. Um, and you're always kind of training somebody else on your culture and your tools and systems rather than having a whole sort of, you know, portfolio of great people that you can put in, in spots all the time. And I think that's where um, our, our main focus is on. I, I think, you know, a lot of people have had probably focused on that for a long period of time, but now it's just even more critical that you do it and do it well. Right, 
Right, that's a good point. That's yeah, and, you know, and we talked a little bit about the uh, the hourly uh, type employees, but when you're when you're dealing with the salary staff employees, I mean, um, are there any trends there in terms of you know certain positions being trickier to fill than others? I mean, I know that at one point, you know, uh, well maybe probably still, you know, it seems like revenue managers are in a are in a much better kind of bargaining position than maybe they were in the past. And anything like that that's that's worth noting. Um, maybe I, I repeat the question. I'm not, I'm not sure if I understand the question. Sorry. Like, I mean, is it is it a uh, when you're when you're hiring people for uh, full time staff like salary positions? Um, right. You know, is there is there any kind of uh, trending? You know, in terms of the type of position and whether it's you know any easier or any trickier? I, I like I know that for example, revenue managers are in high demand. You know, or or, or sure. good. Uh, good sales and marketing people that really like know what they're doing, like, you know, stuff like that. I mean, any, anything there that's, you know, a challenge or an opportunity or anything. I think the, I think the, the market is, is really good for high performers. I would say that um, mm-hmm. from, from a sales perspective, revenue management, GM, um, if you're performing well and you have a, you have a really good resume and it's, it's proven and you interview well, you're, you're, it's going to be a higher market for you. Um, I think there's probably a lot of GMs because of the labor market and sales and, and stuff like that are probably not ready to have the title they have already, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's, that's kind of makes the recruiting and hiring even more, more difficult. Um, but I think, you know, when it comes to revenue managers, I think one thing that we know is that it is, you know, is not just with revenue, but regionals and above property is where they're located. Where do they need to be and what's important? So do they need to relocate to and be in the corporate office or can they work remotely? Right. And revenue managers, is, you know, they can work remotely for, you know, it's mm-hmm. just in sales. And if they're going to be traveling or they don't need to be in office, then don't force it because it, lo- it lowers your recruiting pool. Right. So, right, right, right. So if you can expand your recruiting pool in accounting, um, so because we do centralized accounting, so when you know revenue management, accounting, sale, I mean, if the people can be in operation, that they can be remote, and that expands your your recruiting pool and, and allows you to hire better people, then you have to look look at yourself and say, do they need to be in the corporate office or are they good where they are, and we're, we can be efficient that way. Mm-hmm. So I think that mm-hmm. that's important. GMs obviously have to be there, but. Um, from above property, I think where they're located is. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 a really really good point too. I mean, I mean, you know, I, I've throughout the years I've done a lot of work, you know, from home as well myself, and and I you know I always appreciate the ability to do that, and and uh, you know, and I, and then sometimes you know you just shake your head when there's people that are kind of trapped in that old school mentality of like, you know, you have to be here on site, you know, every day and blah blah blah. So, you know, like like do you find that? Um, you know, the, your philosophy in, in terms of allowing people to work remotely, I mean, do you find that to be somewhat progressive or do you think that you think that more employers are kind of open to that these days or, or should be, you know? I Well, I don't – I I can't say for people that should be or not or not. I, I can tell you for sure it, it narrows your labor pool. So yeah. if people are like, you know, our culture is you have to be in the office and this is what you need to do, then that's their culture and that's fine. You know, I'm not – I have no – it's, it's up to them, but I do know it, it, it narrows your pool. So if I made every single regional director of operations, revenue manager, accountant, um, sales directors, if I made them all be based in Atlanta, I, we would not have the team that we have. Right. So, um, right. That's so a I don't know point. what it would look like, and I don't know what everybody else would look like either, um, but that's kind of where – we try and hire the best people to to help run our portfolio from above property. And for us to do that, we we need people to work remotely. Yeah. That's we don't need them point. to work remotely, but they, it, it again, allows us to attract better talent. Right. Right. And so, and, and it's, and it, by and large, it works for, it works for you to, to that arrangement works. Yeah. And, and it has to work. I mean, at the end of the day, it doesn't have to work for me to right? It has to work for, like the VP of operations has to be good with his people being remote, and the VP of sales has to be good with his people being remote. If they can yeah. work remotely, 
inefficiently, then it's okay with me, right? But I do, there is a communicate, there is definitely, there's a point where you do need people to be together, and there's a point where you don't. And it's making mm-hmm. sure that you, you weigh those, all those options and what positions where, who needs to be together for what, and who doesn't. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Uh, that's that's another really interesting uh, thing. I, I mean, I think personally, a, a lot of people, um, you know, if if you're applying for a job and and you know, part of the, I guess, the overall job package is that you can work from remote. I mean, that's like a huge, uh, that's a huge incentive right there. I mean, you know, it's like before you even get into the benefits and things like that. I mean, I would think that, right? You know, yeah, yeah, you're offering a big incentive. Cool. That's great. All right, man. Well, I mean, I think that kind of covers it for me. I mean, is there anything else you want to add? Anything that you think we missed here? No. If you have any questions, go just shoot me an email if you need Okay. To. All Thanks right. Thanks so much. All right, man. Have a good All vacation. Right. Take care. All right. Okay. Take care. Bye. Bye.